What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. So in the last video we did the bottom end for the KX65 and this time we're gonna do the top end. So what I have here is my stock cylinder that was uh, sent out by Teddy Boyko at Boyko Racing to get replated. He also went through and cut some of the, uh, the hard edges in there, some of the chamfers, cleaned up the outside. And then he also cleaned up my stock head. He had to recut this because it had been uh, warped at some point. So got that all set up. I'm gonna run that in lieu of my Athena just because this is brand new and fresh. The Athena's got a little bit of hours on it. Could probably run it, I haven't measured it, but uh, we're gonna go with this for right now since it's nice and fresh. With it we have a Pro X uh, piston with a custom third hole drilled in here by Teddy. We've also got a uh, new wrist pin bearing, new wrist pin rings, circlip, all of the fun stuff. I've got a gasket kit as well from the Wrench Rabbit kit. And we're gonna get the top end slapped back on. All right, first things first, I'm just gonna check the ring gap on our new rings here. I'm gonna put them down into the bore. Take our piston and just press them down evenly. And then we measure the gap. So yeah, so the 0.18 millimeter is just barely getting squeezed by them. Pretty sure the gap tolerances are anywhere between 0.15 millimeters and 0.35 millimeters. So we are pretty, pretty dead center. All right, so with our gaps measured, and with intolerance, if there is a marking on the rings, that generally goes up. So we're gonna start by locating the dowels on our piston. Let's see if I can focus in. There's one, and there's one. And that's where our gap for our ring is gonna go. So I'll start the ring in right in the groove and just kind of work my way around slowly. Definitely don't want to force these, you can break them pretty easily. Or warp them to bend them up. And it should slide into place. And once compressed, it'll fit around that dowel. So let's get the top one on now. Same thing as before. Find the dowel, work the ring around, and there we go. So that's our piston set. So with my piston all set up, I'm going to locate the arrow that's pointing towards the exhaust. So it's going to sit in the engine like this. I like to work on the circlips that are facing outward, just it makes it easier so I'm not bending around the engine. So we're gonna put this circlip in first, and uh, then we'll put the wrist pin and bearing around the rod. So I know I've said it a few times, when you're working with these circlips, put some safety glasses on, cause these things fly, and the last thing you want is one of these coming in and hitting you in the eye. So what I like to do is I like to grab the circlip with some needle nose pliers, and roll it into position by kind of rolling it around in the groove. And so now we're we're close. So it's compressed, but it's not in the groove. So we can take something from behind and put our thumb over here and gently work it into the groove. So now we can see focus. So now we can see we've worked the circlip into the groove. So I basically roll the circlip like so to avoid catching the end on anything and it usually will just kind of fall into that groove, lock in, and then if you, you can do some minor adjustments once it's compressed in there. But now that we have this on the opposite side, flip it around again, make sure we find the arrow, and let's install this into the engine. And we're going to grab our new wrist pin bearing and give it a little bit of oil on there. 
This is two stroke premix oil. Same oil I run in the engine. So we slide our piston and our wrist pin into, into position and we push our wrist pin through, catching through the bearing on the rod all the way to the other side. And then we can just kind of push it in so it's fully seated against the other circlip, like so. Now we have to get the circlip in this side. That's the fun one. All right, so before we put the other circlip in, we're going to want to cover the crankcase. Reason being, and if you watch my last KX65 top end video, it's pretty easy to get a circlip to go down into the case and you have to go fishing. And it's not fun. If <laughs> the engine's in the bike, it's gonna be a miserable time getting it out. But there we go. We got all that nice and covered. All right, safety squints engaged. We've got our other circlip here and we're going to roll it in as we did the last one. This one's gonna put up a little bit more of a fight. Okay. I think we are set. Just make sure that it is actually, yep, it is fully seated in the gap there. So there we have it, our second circlip fully installed. So we can once again remove our rag from the crankcase. Next, we're gonna find our base gasket. Let's slide that on over. Get that in position. Then we're gonna want to line up our rings with their dowels. Make sure those are in position. And we grab our cylinder and drop a little bit of lube down the bore. We want this to slide on nice and smooth. Don't want anything hanging up in there. You don't need a ton, just enough to kind of wet the cylinder walls. And then comes the hard part. You need to compress the piston rings around the dowels. All right, so if we're looking at the piston, find the dowels and we get the rings locked around them. And the easiest way that I found to do this is to use one hand Get them squared up, like so, so they're both around the dowels, and you hold it with your left hand, or whatever hand's your non-dominant hand, and use the other hand to slide the cylinder on top. This might be a better view of it actually happening. I'm just gonna do a couple drops of oil, just to get that nice and lubed. And then we compress this side, and you don't want to rush. You want to make sure your rings are fully compressed in the cylinder before you let go of them. So it looks like I got the top one set. The bottom one is not there yet. We might have moved it off the dowel, so we're going to back it up a little bit. Reset. Okay, make sure you take your time. You can bend piston rings pretty easily. And funny enough, they're not that easy to come by. Just the rings, that is. Whole piston kit, sure. All right, we have the first we have the first rings compressed. We're working on the second one now. Looks like we're good. 
and slowly give it a little push. Oh, we might not be. Oh, yeah, there we go. So as it slides on, you want to visually inspect. I see that this one is in the groove. I can't actually see that one because it's covered by the cylinder. Let me slide the cylinder into position. There we have it. So at this point, I like to hold the cylinder and either rotate the flywheel or use the kickstarter to just cycle it through and make sure the piston moves freely in the cylinder. Doesn't catch on anything. And it's looking pretty good. All right, up next we're gonna get the bolts holding the cylinder down on. This is a great time to repurpose that rag to block the intake. Don't want anything falling down in there while we're working. All right, next we're torquing the cylinder bolts down, which is at 18 foot-pounds. And it's a little hard to get wrenches on here. They just barely work sometimes. Next comes head gasket, and then our head. All right, so these bolts also go down to 18 foot-pounds. All right, one more check around for 18, 18, 18. and 18. All right, now let's remove this. Get our reed block. Toss that in. And our boot. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that the timing is set to the stock point. If we zoom in super close here. You see those three lines on the bracket. We wanna put the middle line dead center on that indicator. It looks like it's pretty close, um, but I'm just gonna make sure that it is completely lined up. That's pretty good. Crank these back down. So, our marks were correct, uh, perfectly under stock time. You can advance or retard it depending on you know what you're riding and what performance you need out of it. We might mess with that later, but for right now, we're just gonna leave it stock. We're gonna button this all up. All right, the last thing before I call this engine done. We hooked up my leak down tester here, strapped it into the intake boot, we threw a spark plug in, we lowered the cylinder to bottom dead center, locked off the exhaust. Don't worry about the zip ties, they're just holding the gauge and uh, manifold in place, otherwise it like pops out of the intake boot. So what we're gonna shoot for is holding six PSI for a good 10 minutes, and we'll know we don't have any air leaks in the system. I'll leave the link below uh, the video where I built this and tested the YZ85, but for now, Let's see if she holds about 6 PSI. So we're going to hold it about there. And... Oops. Alright, a little low. <laughs> Let's, get... Let's get to like 7 and then pull it off. 
There we go. So the goal is 10 minutes without that moving. All right, after 10 minutes, we've lost just the tiniest amount of air. Uh, I hit the entire uh, setup with some soapy water. I did see uh, some tiny, tiny, tiny bubbles coming out of there. So I think it's all just leaking from the coupler to the boot. Definitely no huge air leaks. We're not like pumping through one of the side seals. And you know what, I'm gonna call this a success. Just like that, we got the top end on, we got the whole bike tested, we got the timing set, we've got it pressure tested. It is ready to go back in the bike and I am really excited. We've got some events coming up and I can't wait to ride the KX65 again. So thank you for hanging out with me on this one. I know it was a little long between the bottom and the top end, waiting on parts, but like I said, thanks for hanging out with me in the garage. I'll see you in the next one.